Harper. My name is Valerie Harper, and I'm here with Carol. Okay, that looks good. Okay, Valerie, tell me why you started playing the sporting games. Oh, I was very fortunate to have married into the games, as it were. I um, I had a roommate. Arlene Galanka, who was uh, working at Second City. And at that time, I guess it was, gee, in the 60s, in New York, it was truly the toast of the town. It certainly was the toast of the creative town. Everyone knew about it. Everybody was talking about it. Um, Alan Arkin and Barbara Harris were so well known as to have having come from there, and uh, Mike Nichols and Elaine May and so forth. So I knew all about it. Then Arlene uh, became a member of the troupe for a short period of time. She only was in the company a short while. But while she was there, uh, she said, there's a terrific guy you have to meet. She wasn't real enamored with my current boyfriend, and as a good roommate, she was trolling for fresh meat. <laughs> good stuff, uh, someone more, uh, maybe with more permanency, and she said his name's Dick Shaw, and he's terrific. So I went down to the show, and I saw it, I thought, oh, this is so wonderful, and this guy's wonderful. And I started going with Dick, and we were later married. And uh, that marriage was 13 years, and the friendship goes on. We were divorced, gee, back in uh, 79, and as recently as last summer, we worked together, and I count him as a dear and treasured friend. So it's like an ongoing relationship. It will be lifelong, I'm sure, Richard Shaw and myself. But Richard was just a penultimate, wonderful um, game player, of, of uh, an exponent, a um, not even an exponent, I guess the word would be, to not be fancy, Dick did Viola's work as, as good as or better than anyone. Uh, Second City, there were a lot of people with marvelous wit and ingenuity and amazing brilliance and artistry and all these things in different areas. But to really make the space live, to have the space um, it, by use of what we would call imaginary uh, objects, which Viola would slap my hand if I said imaginary because it's real space. But the idea of the space unifying and someone creating a whole environment an aquarium, a, a, a kitchen, a television room, a, a barracks, uh, whatever it was, Dick Shaw, by using the space in a way where the objects and the environment came alive, people thought they were seeing a whole set. So in that way, I don't think there's been anybody better than Richard at Viola's work and his purity in trying to do her work. He also later ran workshops. So before I worked with Viola, I was in Dick's workshops that he was just doing with me as his new bride and we were working out, we worked uh, uh, in various ways before I ever worked with Second City. And uh, I guess about the first, second year of our marriage, I was very inculcated with the work and um, then I did do a Second City show, uh, several of them for industrial, with um, Avery Schreiber and Jack Burns and uh, Sheldon, Sheldon Potenkin then directed a company that went on to it was Linda Lavin and myself and David Steinberg and Dick and Omar Shapley, we played Toronto so that was early That was um, I was married in 63 so yeah uh, no, no, was I married in 63? No, no, no. I, 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 this terrible memory loss as we get older. I was married in 67. And from then on, I was very much a part of the Second City Theater Games family. I worked in the game theater on Sedgwick um, in Chicago later, uh, I guess toward the end of the 70s, uh, 60s. And then um, through the 70s, Dick and I did all kinds of work together. And then, of course, in 70, I did story theater at the Mark Taper Forum. But I literally married into the work. And early on, I guess when T Dick was uh, working with the committee, I met, that's when I first met Viola in San Francisco, and she came up and ran workshops, and it was just spectacular to, to hear her, to know her. So um, her work preceded her in my life, but um, I was really privileged uh, to work with her. Uh, do you still use the game? Oh, yeah. You do? All the time. All the time. In fact, Carol, it's interesting. Last Wednesday, I don't know when this is going to air, but just just as recently as um, April 1994, 
I taped a new pilot for a series called The Office. It's a wonderful, wonderful ensemble piece about secretaries and bosses and life in the office. It's absolutely marvelously funny. Written by a brilliant young woman, uh, Susan Beavers, c created it and wrote it, and it's incredible. And I, in learning my lines, I still apply a very simple game. It's actually not a game, so it's just a technique. She's just got thousands of these things um, called... Um, vowels and consonants and uh, what it does is it, it cleans up your speech and it helps you learn it's the idea is that the, the the our bodies have a skeleton and words have a skeleton and their skeleton is the letters so you would say a, 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 like i would say um valerie harper for instance i would go a e r e a uh just vowels and then i go back and i'd say v l r p r and then Valerie Harper. And somehow, having divided it to see its so-called skeleton, to quote Viola, it helps the word live in a way that it didn't before. It cleans up your speech. It helps you remember. It, um, it puts your concentration on just the sound. Then you can add character and all those other things. But it was, it's wonderful. Viola always beautifully, I'm a dancer, and my first love was to be a ballerina. When I failed that, I became an actress. <laughs> But um, she used to say, I'm the ballet master. Paul Sills, her brilliant son, who created Second City, of course, would do the show and he'd direct. But for the players to be able to do Paul's work, Viola was absolutely, I can't, how's the word? Invaluable? I, 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 what's, no, you can't do it without. What's the word? Essential. Essential beyond essential. So with Story Theater in 70, when we got the company together, that was Paul Sen and myself, um, Melinda Dillon, Dick Libertini, who were married, Dick Shaw, at that time I was married to Dick, Hamilton Camp, Peter Bonners, Mary Fran. I think that was the little group down at the uh, Mark Taper Forum. Um, that Viola a rehearsal was a workshop, long Actually, every week, uh, weeks of re of working on the games and then applying them to creating the stories that later became story theater. But she always said she was the ballet mistress or the ballet master. That right after opening night of the you know Giselle or Swan Lake, back at the bar, <laughs> you know the next morning in the gray, ugly rehearsal clothes, no makeup, your hair in a ponytail, doing plies. She said you got to do your plies. So that particular is kind of plies words and. Um, excuse me, vowels and consonants. It's a long-winded answer, but well, there's a lot to talk about with her. So that's one I use. And I also just, um, I, got, I get the company to, I, I'm going to, if we go to series, they, all the actors said they'd love to do kind of just a little, you know, you walk in the space, you move it around together. For your listeners, it's hard to talk about what it is because it's experiential. But what it does is it brings her work, brings you, um, in communication, in connection with the fellow players. And the great thing about Vi's work for me is that whether you're an actor or not, it's absolutely valuable. You can use it in your life with your family, at, at, in the workplace. Um, you know, it's um, the, her book, Improvisation for the Theater, are marvelous techniques, and the card catalog are wonderful for directors, for actors, for anybody in the performing arts. But at the same time, um, anyone who would be in a workshop, which was created for children years and years ago in the settlement houses in Chicago when she was a young woman, she developed them to help kids uh, get over their, uh, what she called armor, separation, and lack of movement. She would, uh, those, those, those uh, techniques can just be played for fun. And I don't mean like parlor games. I mean for a real profound experience of us being connected one to the other. And I think a lot in life fragments us and separates us. And anything that is uh, that tells the truth about human existence, which is that we are connected, in fact. We are not as darn separated as we may think we are and does it in an effortless, natural way, then it's, it's pure gold. And, that, and that's what Viola, that, I think that's the key of her work. Oh, Valerie, you're giving me so much good stuff. This oh, am great. I really? Oh, this good. is great. This is great. You've already answered so much. I'm pretty mouthy, but let's go. Let's Maybe I'll make them. Sh is it better to be shorter? No, no, no. no. You just You'll edit. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this is really great. Mm. Okay. So, um, do you think that um, 
are, are there some people that are better players than others? Or let me ask you this: Can you be a good player and a bad actor, or a good actor and a bad player? That's a very interesting question. I guess I'd have to say that whether someone does Viola's work or not, the really good actors are players. <laughs> the really excellent people um, do have found the improvisational moment within the script. That's the whole deal with acting, for me at least. The approach is, and I heard Michael Caine once in an interview say, someone said, well, Mr. Caine, when we watch you act, it's like you're making it up. And he said, well, that's the idea, isn't it? <laughs> and it really is to be the improvisation, uh, the, excuse me, for your performance to be a series of improvisational moments of not knowing what to say. And I think it's a French word. Carol, I may be wrong, but a friend once told me that uh, improvise is from improvise, which is French, which means to not see ahead, to not to be on that moment of anything possible happening, moment by moment. And... Um, I think that there are many fine actors who maybe, um, I don't know though, I think to be really good, you have to be connected with the other players. And I've worked with actors who've never had a, a stitch of Viola's work, but were wonderful players. Because when you threw the ball, they caught it and threw it back and play. I think maybe um, within your question is that thing of either stardom or a person being a star or front, front and center talking and being seen, um, that does not, that's, uh, that's the antithesis of Viola's work. Um, but, say, Shakespeare is filled with uh, so many characters connecting and reconnecting that her games for a Shakespearean company would be absolutely marvelous because then the, I think the dialogue would really sing and the real meaning between people would come out. So um, I, I, think it's an, I think it's an asset to any actor to have Viola's work, period. But I do feel there are wonderful actors doing great performances without. Um, and in life, just for the theater, support your fellow player, that's a good motto for living. <laughs> to be there and be present and accountable to each moment that you live. I mean, that's a, a fabulous way. We can't all do it, but to go for it. Also, um, in terms of playing versus acting, um, and Viola was very stringent and specific always about the terminology because when you play one of her games, the focus is not am I thinking up funny lines or am I being great or am I coming off well. It's more uh, like a, a ball game. A basketball is game. All the players are focused on the ball and getting it in the basket and scoring. Uh, not for themselves, but to win the game. So with Viola's work, you, the scene's the thing. And as Shakespeare said, I I'm keep going back to Shakespeare, but the bard is pretty darn good and said some great stuff. The play's the thing. And the play within the actors is the thing. And that's where Viola has always focused. And you can take her work and apply it to Shakespeare, to sitcom, to a poetry reading, to UNESCO, to uh, Tennessee Williams, to... Uh, you know, um, Edward Albee or uh, Neil Simon, because the idea is to find the connectedness. And if um, um, if it's written or if it's the pure improvisation that Second City used to do and other groups now, where they would take a suggestion and then just go with it and really improvise, the best of those was not thinking up clever lines or writing on your feet. Viola's work is very specific, and it is not standing up Improvising is not uh, writing lines in your head and then saying them. It is being with the other players and trusting that something wonderful is going to come up from the synergy of the three of you. And it is more often not the mind, it's more the spirit in play in her work. And so then the, act and the audience has that to watch. That between the lines is the stuff that's essential. That which is invisible becomes visible, and it's it's thrilling. So, uh, or the recognition that someone is an animal, and they they get the feeling they don't actually need a fur suit to be a dog. Like Paul Sand won an Emmy being a dog in second and excuse me in story theater. Uh, he he was wonderful in a lot of other scenes. That's not exactly why he won the Emmy, but he didn't do. And by the way, he's doing a series now where he's playing a dog, which is wonderful. And if they shoot it right, it's going to be a smash. But Paul got dog in his 
attitude and kind of, uh, and he had the bark, but he didn't go on all fours. He was standing, but he was the essence of dog. So that's kind of what her work frees you to be able to do. So I think that actors who have that freedom are the best actors. And many people who don't have it can get it through Viola's work. So um, I, I guess, um, but there are probably very wonderful actors who, who, who are either frightened by the work or don't understand it or haven't had it or don't need it. And that's fine too because somehow they've arrived at, um, at uh, really knowing the play's the thing that getting the ball in the basket, that the scene working for everyone in it is what's important. Not, uh, well, I must be downstage front and center, and I will say this, and you got nobody move while I'm talking and that stuff. You know, that's so. I, um, I don't know if I've answered your question, but that's my sense of it. So when, and when you said earlier, you said it's about getting the connection. You mean connection with the, your fellow players. Is that what you meant? And with the audience. Okay. Yeah, and with the audience, that we get that moment of, I think laughs come out of great truth when you get a really true laugh from an audience. It's recognition. It's like, oh, you know, and they, it's that, that connectedness between us. Oftentimes, scripts will divide people because everyone is working on their part. <clears throat> and you can have a scene done, a simple scene with three characters, and we each do our part, and it's really fun, and we know our lines, but it seems lifeless, or it could be better. You apply a game of Viola. So, so for instance, uh, uh, I remember her saying, and I've used it many times, contact. The game of contact is you cannot speak without making physical contact of some kind with the other players. And that she invented, created, out of the need... Uh, all of her games came from a need. That's why they were all pure, I think. Where children were standing with stick arms at their sides, talking at each other and kind of not moving. So she said, how do I get their bodies? She could say, move, you got to move more. Then you get stick people moving stickily. But to say, you've got to find a way to touch, come in physical contact with people. So first a hand was on an arm, but then you'd see somebody nudge someone with a shoulder or come over and put their head on their forehead. or Because then the game gets more comic. They, they say, okay, now new contact. Your hands are out of the game now. You've got to physically contact. So then you have someone, and to justify it, maybe they faint against someone. So then the scene is gone. Oh, someone's fainted. And then we go on. and It's, um, it's a wonderful, uh, that, that's a great tool for breaking down physical stiffness. Um, there's another thing, like, uh, for instance, um, Viola say, has never said louder to a group of actors, and actors are told that all the time. Because then you get a bunch of people talking loud. Rather, Viola will say, share your voice, or fill the space with your voice. Um, I had the supreme privilege of working with third graders in my daughter's class. She's now a fifth grader. Um, our whole budget for art was cut. So they said, well, Valerie, you're an actress. Can you do a, a summer, can you do a Christmas pageant for us? And have the kids, like, do a play? And I said, no, but I will be willing to maybe play some games with them. So that's what I did, the third grade. Uh, subsequent years, it's unfortunately, there hasn't been time, but I have used it here and there when I could. And I'd never run a workshop, but it was such a privilege to work with children. And Viola always said that. There's, there's such purity and good spirit and willingness to play. They, you don't have to break down, as she says, the armor so much that adults get about, oh, I'll look foolish. The kids are willing to, oh, I'll be, am I a penguin? Oh, yeah, they walk like this, and they jump into it. So I, I did that every Monday for our whole school year and boy was I taught um, three the whole grade level because I couldn't just do Christina my daughter's class I, I did all three third grades and the teachers gave me half an hour not enough time but we do a, an hour and a half each Monday morning and I tell you it's interesting I have a profoundly different and more expanded appreciation of the games and indefinitely of darling Miss Bowen, having been on the other side of a workshop. And, it, you know, it was pretty rudimentary, and I couldn't do too much, and we didn't get into acting. It just freed the kids. And I tell you, all their teachers tell me of a profound change in a lot of the kids where they, they speak differently. And I remember I would come back and look at the card catalog and do all I could. So um, it's, uh, it's interesting um, how the work is... Uh, has supported me in so many ways. And uh, these kids, I saw the difference in them. Children who were uh, unsure or problems, supposedly, you know, 
And I'd run back when I'd have a problem. I'd run back to the book or the card catalog, and you know, it would be like Viola telling me uh, what 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 I could do to to get over it. An idea of a child saying pass. You, you know, that was the big one. I say, no, 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 there's no passing. You must do it, and you don't have to do it well. This is not about acting. This is not about being good. You, you all have to play the game. So so what kind of change did you see in some of these kids who have problem, had some problems? Oh, I saw children who felt, um, well, one little girl who, who, who never wanted to speak in public. Now she gives great reports. And I, I didn't continue with the kids. I see them all the time because they're Christina's grade level. Another... Um, Another child who was uh, physically said, well, I'm not good. I said, well, you don't have to be good. You just get in and let the space support you. A lot of it was having them walk just through the space and then throw the ball, cooperation, and support your fellow player. I said that a lot, you know. And uh, we did space work. Um, I saw... Um, Oh, and this was very interesting because third grade is not so, in, I guess it gets a little better. I think third and fourth grade, actually I'm not a child specialist, I'm sure some of your viewers are. There's a time when it's the boys only and the girls only, or being with their friends. And I would always break that up, and I would make them mirror, boys mirror girls. And um, we have a great class level. I'm not laying at the altar of Viola Spolin, but I do think it had an impact. The kids, all 75 of them, or maybe 80 now, um, and they all ask me to this day, oh, when are we going to do the games again? Mm -hmm. And it's, there's not much room in the schedule because they get busier and they start moving in, around classes. And I have an ecology club that I sometimes, we do um, space work together just to, to, to exercise. Um, I did it once last year in the fourth grade, and I just, I've had the time, um, and then sometimes I don't. But the teachers, it's, it's tough. It's tough in, to wedge it into the school year. Well, she once said to me, that, she said, give me a group of kids for a day and I can wipe out racism. Mmm. Mmm. I bet that's true. Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, or they never would, would, would buy into it again. Mm -hmm. It's true. Because they've experienced the other as self. Right. Mirror exercise is amazing. It's amazing that way. And you see children, uh, oh, wonderful little girl. I'd never forget her. She was great. We were doing mirror, and first one person does the motion, and the other reflects. And then you, that's A. Then you say B, and then the other person who has been the mirror becomes the initiator. In other words, they're the human being standing in front of a mirror. The other's the reflection. And then you go and say, well, let it just happen. Each one, neither one initiate, and that's magic. And this one little girl at one point turned to me in the middle of her being the mirror. She'd first been the one combing her hair and this and that. And she said, oh, it feels so weird to be the mirror. I feel like I have no control. And I said, darling, just relax and enjoy being the reflection. And I really... It was just great to hear her say that is so much people that are always fighting white knuckled for control in their lives. It's an absolute um, fallacy, you know. I mean, we control in the way of of of, of running the universe yourself. <laughs> Witness the earthquake, you know. I mean, it, it, it's good for us to know, sure, a certain amount of control being appropriate, and I don't mean you just. I use the word control advisedly, but to want to control the physical universe and hold things and have it your way, it's a great kind of getting a healthy ego and not a sick one. Uh, and Viola's games, I think, really help. And the kids had the experience of that very young, and I think that's invaluable. What about, uh, I think I, somebody told me Buck Henry made the remark that there's two disciplines in the theater. There's improvisation, I was fooling. And his method, Stanislavski. Have you experienced both of those? Sure. Yes. Can I you talk about the difference? Sure, sure. Um, even the terminology. Um, I think the Strasberg method in the actor's studio um, is, uh, I think it comes, the focus is on the mind. Whereas, uh, and the mind will get you to the experience. Viola's work is moreover um, getting out of the way so that the experience and the truth can come forth. Now, I think really good actors in the studio get to that point. Um, 
But I know that it's a lot, like for instance, let me just say, it's not that one's good or bad or anything. I mean, they both have value. Um, for me, the term sense memory immediately, as Viola would say, puts you in your head. It does. The very word memory is mind-related. So that when people would it'd be in class and they'd be working, uh, if Cloris Leachman told me the funniest story, she said she was in class and she was late at after studio and somebody, she was eating her lunch at the back and um, uh, someone was on stage just peeling a piece of fruit. They cut an orange and then they, they started to peel a banana and they were, you could, see, you know, they were, concentrating on what's the skin like, oh yeah, it's like that, and so forth. And someone in the class said, I smell it, I smell it, I smell the banana, that's brilliant. And Cloris was in the back of the room eating a banana. So it was really funny, but that was great, because it was experimental. But rather than remembering a banana, Viola would, and, and, and Dick was the great one at this, it's almost trust your body. Your body has a memory, so you don't have to do it in your mind. Uh, the physical, just reach out and grab a chunk of space. And you're not in sense of memory. It is real space. So what you're handling is the space in which a banana would rest were it there. And then you just peel it. And you trust that you're, and you smell it, and you buy it much in your mouth and all that. Uh, it isn't remembering a banana and then recreating what the memory brings you. So it's, I'm really cut, splitting hairs here, Carol. I mean, because a real good method actor, I think, will give over to their experiential and they will peel the banana. But I find Viola's work a quicker, less um, heavy, uh, um, what's important or uh, consequential way of working, you know. And I am in no way belittling Actor Studio or Lee Strasberg's tremendous and wonderful um, contribution. Also, Viola used to say, you know, even about herself, she'd say, well, you know, Strasberg, and he's really incredible and he's brilliant and look what, you know, she'd say, he's really revered. And, I, and we'd say to her, he hung out a shingle. He really did. Lee Strasberg was willing to say, guess what? I'm a teacher. I'm going to start this school. Come to me and I will teach you. And Vi, um, just, she, she, she just, I don't know. I don't know if it's that she was bigger than a building, a school. This is, again, I, not tra I don't want this to sound, it's just my, it's my perception only. Um, Viola was like just such a child of the universe and such, and, and, and she even told me, people have told her, uh, Buddhist monks and people in metaphysics and people in ancient religions and uh, the, the people that study the Tao and Buddhism and so forth have said, you have opened an ancient door, you know, and, and, she, she, and she always used to say, the theater is a, a temple and in it we worship God, all those kind of spiritual things. So she... Her work, in my view, um, almost went, it just stepped over the memory. <laughs> Say we don't need memory. We need to open, a constant opening to allow um, the muse to flow through. Uh, now I'm talking about theater. Um, Alice Walker talked about sitting down at her um, table. And yes, she, she wrote a... A brilliant color purple is, is a brilliant piece of literature. And some say, oh gosh, look, she lives, she works, she has such a use of the language. You could say technically how she did it. But her little forward says, I want to thank all the characters for coming. That she said, she sat at her table so many hours in, where was Northern California, wherever her writing place was, kind of a little, uh, you know, garden, something rural, I, I, in my memory. I don't know exactly where, picket fancy or garden or something, quiet with birds. And she would, and she said she just kind of, um, I guess people would call it channeling or something if they want to put a name on it. I guess it's just being open enough to allow where she wasn't in control. Um, there's a wonderful... Um, I think it was, might have been Werner Earhart or, I think it was, who talked about dance and the wonderful dancers in the world who have what a dancer has, the technique, the, the body, the years of work, the, the beautiful um, knowledge of music and the health and the stamina, and they dance. And then you have Barishnikov, who, yes, he is a dancer, but it's almost like he is the space in which dance occurs. So it's a different way 
of approach. But of course, you know, it's like one of those unmeasurables. And I think that's kind of the difference between uh, one of the differences. Um, also, with Viola's work, um, the text and written plays were never the emphasis. Yes, you could put her work as an exercise on a play that you were doing as an actor, but her work, improvisation, to have no script and to have it happen for the first time and the only time that time, that, that, that's what her work really is about. Something coming into being, you know, coming out of the abstraction and getting, um, uh, um, becoming visible, the invisible becoming visible, us coming into presence as sentient beings, you know. So I think that her work is more based on that. Um, and of course, the studio is very, very in the playwright. The play, they have a playwright section and so forth to this day. So they developed great artists and wonderful people who came out of there. But I think that it was just a different uh, ground of being, a, a coming from a different place. But, um, but I think both of them. The methods are to arrive at the same place, which is truth, right? Yes, right. yes, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. A good, a wonderful performances, thrilling theater, a con communication with the viewer, the watcher, the audience, that person. Um, uh, interestingly enough, um, Viola and Paul's work, I'm speaking of Paul Sills and Story Theater in Second City, with the uh, imaginary space, space objects. Um, see, imaginary is a, is, a, is a mental word, see? She, she just makes us you know, kind of thrash that out so you come from the right place. Um, it doesn't work on TV because they cut to a close-up and then everything's gone. So it's almost like it's, it's incumbent upon us to have Viola's work in a theater with real flesh and blood people participating because then the audience is the player. That's, that's the, I guess, the secret. Not the viewer of a proscenium. Paul used to call it museum theater. Not derisively, just that something was preserved and there it was. And uh, wonderfully valuable, but uh, not what he did. And uh, certainly Viola's work, it's like... It's like the celebration of life in its moment rather than a record of it recreated. I think maybe that's the difference. Well, well oh, really? Okay. Now, you, I, I could actually, you're so good, I could talk to you forever, but I know I promised I'd get out of mm -mm. 20 minutes. So let me just ask you oh, a no! more questions. Oh, no! I have plenty of time. I did everything I had to do. All right, all right. You, you take whatever you need, and I may be well, rambling on, but I'm having a good time. Also, I have a great listener. You oh, know right. all this stuff. That's true. I know. Oh, I know you're such a... But you're, you know, the problem is you can't... It's hard to talk about. Talk, you know... You, I'm trying to be aware. But you're doing that. You oh, are well. bringing... Try to put words to it? Yeah. Okay, great. Which is great, because I'm going to be interviewing Paul next week, and I'm, I, oh. I have trepidation, you know, oh. I mean... Just turn it on and let really, him talk. Really, Say, yeah. wow, well, I don't know, I don't know what we yeah. did. We did something. <laughs> <laughs> no, said, are, you going, something are you going to Door County? No, I mean, he'll go into the uh, NPR station. Oh, okay. Right? And, uh, but, mm. you know... I'm hoping for that moment of brilliance that, you know... Oh, it's going to be. Yeah. It'll be there, yeah. if you talk long enough. Yeah. yeah. Right. Anyway, what I was going to ask you, Valerie, was... Um, you know, you continue to do...